Hey everyone and welcome back to more of the council. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, Elizabeth Adams has been murdered. We don't know who it is. We've just cleared our name with Lord William Mortimer. This is his iron we're on, his private estate. He has tasked us with investigating the murder and has given us free access to everyone's rooms and ability to question everyone by his orders, so they can't exactly argue. Well, they can, but to no real, you know, resolve. <laughs> um, we've just been um, investigating quite a bit around the rooms. I I couldn't, can't exactly go through every single detail because <coughs> we need royal jelly to, um, to restore effort points, and we've only got one effort point, which is not good. So we're gonna be very, very careful what we do. Luckily, we got a few things for free, which helps. And I've just realized, and I've already just realized, <laughs> literally this second, that I should have spent some Devil's Thorn, um, and all that to a Carmelite Water to get some free points. That was really stupid of me. But anyway, <clears throat> um, I because I've got so many of those, I need to use them up. Anyways, um, if you want to know about what we learned as we came into this room and beforehand go back and watch the last part otherwise we will continue pentagram what the hell's been going on here plenty i would imagine contrary to what most people believe a pentagram's not there to conjure up i don't know what evil or demonic creature with the point toward the top the pentagram is an ancient symbol of protection against evil Okay, I kind of, even I kind of figured that out. <clears throat> I mean, pentagram is more like, it's, it, it, like, because that's, when a lot of secret signs you see about for movies, like, the actual symbol is designed <clears throat> more as, you know, like a, a symbolic thing, so it's what it, you know when people just do badges or things, they don't do it so that, oh, this is how we're going to, you know, capture or interrogate or uh, lure someone in. It's more like this symbolizes what we, um, what we, what our, you know, ideology is. So it does make sense for a pentagram to be that of, yeah, I mean, okay, a lot of problems have said, oh yeah, for symbolism and all that for summoning, but I would add that those are more circles rather than actual pentagrams. They usually those for protection, so that's kind of that makes sense to me. Uh, oh shit! What is it that gives it free skill again? I, look, I know it sounds a bit silly for one point, but uh, free skill is Carmelite. <clears throat> I wonder if Elizabeth's death has anything at all to do with this pentagram. If a ritual went wrong and degenerated, Elizabeth would probably have been killed in the center of the pentagram, not three meters from here. That's strange. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? Let's go to the mother's books. I wanted to do that, actually. Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual? As much as what I just said is true, they... Because I would also point out that it's in a circle, like I said. So, you put one to the other, so where it goes. You stop just turning up when we don't necessarily need you. You worry us, mate. You seriously do concern us. Anyway, let's have a chat to you. Has Sam uh, finished with this room? <clears throat> do you know who could have made such a mess of this room? Miss Adams, sir, we were given orders to leave the room as it was, so as not to rush her. Did she have a fight with someone to get the room into this state? Not that I know of, sir. Miss Adams would sometimes throw a tantrum, during which she would destroy anything that came to hand. Lord Mortimer told us not to enter the room. Thanks for that information. You are welcome, sir. Has Sam uh, finished with this room? Um, <clears throat> not at the moment. No. I haven't gone over everything yet. Uh, sir may take his time. When Sir would like to leave, Sir has only to tell me. 
Oh, you're kidding me. So they're going to clean up after a beat. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Anything behind here? Just go behind everything. Nope. Gone through that already. Through that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. All right. Well, we've gone through as bad as we can. Has Sir uh, finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, Sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. Okay. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Oh. I'm quite glad they're not just going to clean it all up. That's quite good. I'm, quite, I'm actually glad about that. I do actually kind of fancy myself as a bit of an investigator at the time. You know, I watch detective programs. I like to try and work out who's done it, so... <clears throat> I could really do some royal jelly right now. I'm being serious when I say that. Inspector's Journal. Well, how ironic that is. Nice. Finding plenty of journals. Excellent. I need royal jelly. Not that. A map of Vermont. Interesting. Royal jelly, royal jelly. So <laughs> I'd hate to go into a conversation without having something just to procure ourselves some effort points if need be. We're not exactly on Washington's best side, but my dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. Wow. <clears throat> Interesting. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk to him just yet. <clears throat> I'd like to find out some more information before we... Well, not interrogate's the completely wrong word, but... Wait, can we not open this? My dear George. Oh, the bloody shine off the floor again. That's just so typical. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. Well, it's going to have to pray I don't have to do anything unique. <clears throat> Although, I do have quite a few for free skills, so I might have to do those. Portrait of George Washington. I bet you seen the portrait of that in the documentary. Huh. Yay! So go on Elixir. We need we need plenty of effort points. Oh, excuse me. Nothing else of fascination? Can we go outside by any chance? Damn. Alright, Washington. Let's have a talk with you. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh. So I'm guessing his immunity would be to possibly occultism and politics. Greetings, Liam. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. 
I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. Let's be, let's be quite frank with them. Were you aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Do you take it regularly, Mr. President? Unfortunately, I do, Louis. Oh. I still suffer from a terrible toothache, and it's not likely to get any better. It's just for that, then? Old age, my young friend. I don't wish it upon you, but you'll soon see. At my age, it's rare to have no problems in that domain. And do you take a lot? A moderate amount, Louis. Only the dosage indicated on the prescription of my doctor. I did guess that. <laughs> he actually takes laudanum himself. Wow. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You... Well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Um, ooh, they're costing. Any of these of vulnerability? I'm, I'm, I've got to have a look at this. Neither. Okay, so neither of those are, right? Uh, sorry, an immunity. Interesting. Grieving. Let's get the free skill point for uh, etiquette. I'm talking to all the guests to find out who has an alibi and, well, who doesn't, Mr. President. Can you tell me what you were doing last night so that I can strike your name off the list? I spent the night right here reading. All night? Exactly. Emily stopped by in the middle of the night. You can ask her. She wanted to talk about some business we have in common. Anything whatsoever to do with Elizabeth? Not at all, Louis. A business matter. Hmm. Uh... Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured, it looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. Oh well. <clears throat> it looks like a note between Emily and Washington about <clears throat> trade deals. Ah! English and the Americans are preparing a peace treaty. It would appear that Emily is in secret discussion with Washington about reopening trade between the United States and England. If such an arrangement came into being, France would suffer dearly. Huh. Wow. Well, at least, to be honest, that actually proves in my in my eyes personally, they, as far as the investigator goes, that proves what he said about um, having a business matter that is true business it is secretive in that regard. Yeah, I can I can actually believe that. That's actual proof. I wouldn't give him the benefit there because there's actual written proof there. That's good. I like some bloody royal jelly. Royal jelly, where are you? God damn it. Who? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Piaggi. 
Oh, we can't get in the Piaggi's route. Huh. Right. Uh. Oh, that's our room. Okay, we don't need to. Actually. Oh, I was going to say we'll look around see if we can find any more things. Okay. Who does this room belong to exactly? Manuel, Manuel Godroy, Godroy. Oh, he's the other guest who obviously hasn't arrived yet. Oh, hang on. Hey, a Russian ruble. I wonder what'd be worth today. A ruble? Ah, that was. No. Oh, god damn it. We're not very much luck with our jelly, are we? At this point. Emily Hillsborough. Okay. King George the Third in coronation robes. Nice touch for the room of an English duchess. Well, what do you expect? <clears throat> it gives. Tending children at the orphanage in Harlem. I find it a little hard to understand this painting choice. Well, we can now that we're. Because she had a. Um, I think we could see something there. She has a soft spot for the orphanage there. <clears throat> we found that out, so. That was good. We've confirmed that. Dear E, I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should, under no circumstances, hamper Sir Gregory's plans. Decidedly, they have support from the highest level in Buckingham Palace. So here we both are, hands and feet tied, and little room to maneuver. Keep me abreast of events. Our mission is becoming more complicated. Yours, E. T.S. The French chapter of the Order doesn't appear to know anything about the arrival of our friend Sarah. I therefore cannot comment on it. However, my guess is that she has come here for personal reasons. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what, uh, a dialogue between Emily and her twin sister Emma, which we found out. The Lady's Waldegrave by Reynolds. Painted upon the request of the Waldegrave family in an effort to find them a husband. Displayed like meat. It's disgusting. It's not the worst thing I've seen. Grammar of Port Royal. Ah, the artistry of the French language and all its splendor. Whoever masters French commands the world. At least une partie of it. At least one part of it. <laughs> Did we get extras there? Ah, oh, linguistics, excellent. A letter from William Pitt. The younger addressed to Emily. He's the present Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Emily has indeed some powerful backers. Madam, thank you for consoling the Queen. The King's situation is worsening, but I wager he'll recover from this present fit. Next time you speak with Her Majesty the Queen, would you please be so kind as to ask her to look into my petition to raise taxes with the King? I will personally see to it that our nation will recover from this impasse. But King George's mental situation is slowing down our decision taking. Thank you in advance for all your help. William Pitt, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Wow. <clears throat> she really does have some quite powerful support, doesn't she? Duchess, you can inform King George of the Holy Father's backing. We shall assist you with financing the recruitment of regiments of emigrant royalists to fight against France. Your friend, His Eminence, 
Giuseppe Piaggi. Oh, okay. Two coils circle the lock. I'm sure there's a key somewhere. A letter from William Pitt the Elder addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need to ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. So this is William, the Prime Minister's father, I believe. Okay, interesting. Queen Charlotte. All the royal family of England is there, from what I can tell. Wow. Might as well. The Devil's Thorn, to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. But we're gonna need that in this conversation, I think. Elixir, okay. Now, what are. Then, so, you can use psychology, but you can't use logic, okay? What can I do for you, Louis? I've come to see you about last night's tragedy. Did you hear anything about what happened to Elizabeth? Yes, we all did. Rumors spread quickly, you know. How awful. I didn't know her well, but I hope at least the poor thing didn't suffer too much. She's like, oh, was she in... No, vulnerability, okay. That's three points. I don't think we need to give away what the scene that death looks like, but let's use psychology for now. Death came quickly. You can be assured of that. If such a senseless act can happen here, then none of us is truly safe anywhere. Lord Mortimer must be mortified that one of his guests could have committed such an act, don't you think? He is indeed very upset about it. It's only natural after such a violent murder. Violent? What do you mean? Elizabeth was stabbed nine times. Oh my god, Louis. How awful. The murderer must have had a serious grudge against her to set upon her like that. It must have been a crime of passion. Do you know what happened exactly? In fact, Lord Mortimer has asked me to look into this case, Emily. Really? Are you Lord Mortimer's snoop now? I'm doing it for Elizabeth. Not to please Mortimer. Good for you. Quite right, too. Have you found out anything? Uh... Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? <sighs> I must admit, Louis, I... I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. Okay. I'm now interviewing all the guests to establish the alibis for each person. Just so that I can cross you off the list of suspects, can you tell me what you were doing on the night of the murder? Am I given to understand that I'm on the list of suspects? Don't take it the wrong way, but I must consider every possibility. Exactly. Well, if you absolutely wanted to be sure of my activities that evening, you only had to join me, you know. I know, Emily. Especially since I couldn't prevent the murder, even though I spent part of the evening with Elizabeth. You're... you're sure it's not too hard to bear for you? The fact is, I don't have a choice. But I will find the murderer. I owe Elizabeth that, at least. True. Sure. 
Ooh, okay. Let's about by the fabric. I found a torn piece of dress in Miss Adams' room. Gray silk. Where's it from? That's what I'm trying to find out. The color doesn't match any of Elizabeth's dresses, but I might not have found all of her clothes yet. Good Lord, Louia. I... Do you realize what this means? If this piece of dress isn't from Elizabeth, then it's... I don't have any gray silk dresses, Louis. Neither does my sister since we wear the same clothes. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to check with you. I'm so sorry, Louis. Thank you. Are you all right? You know, I'm sure there's a good reason why your mother was at the scene. Thank you, Emily. Okay. I hear you were in discussions with the Holy See. Oh, either His Eminence can't keep his tongue from wagging, or you've been poking your nose where you shouldn't, sir. Even so, Emily, you're raising a royalist army. That's no small matter. And you are straying from the subject. Is there anything else you wanted to ask me? Huh. Tell me, Emily, what's the nature of your relationship with Washington? Oh, come off it, Louis. You're not going to go into a jealous rage, are you? No, I can assure you of that. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Let's say Washington's letter. Oh, come on. You're preparing a treaty to break the ties between the United States and France. Whatever are you talking about, Louis? I read your correspondences, Emily. It's not what you think. So don't go thinking there's anything personal in it. Are you trying to break Franco-American agreements, Emily? That's the job, Louis. We're all doing everything we can to serve the best interests of our nation. It's got nothing to do with you or us. But why didn't you tell me about it before? Would you have told me? I suppose she does have a point there. We found the murder weapon. What is it? A dagger. Quite slim. Have you found its owner? Not yet. Still searching as it happens. That said, since a blade penetrated the body several times, the murderer's hand will have been covered in blood. Mm. You think that's a clue? The handprint was a very slender hand, Emily. Probably that of a woman. Do you realize what that means? There are only three of us on the island. Bearing in mind that neither my sister nor myself had any reason to set upon the young lady, that means... I know, Emily. I know. Keep up your courage, Louis. I'm sure there's an explanation. You're bound to shed some light on it all. If what you say is true, Emily, I'm less and less enthusiastic about shedding any light on the subject. Oh, I don't blame him, to be honest, on that regard. Division locked. Free skill. Nah, I won't use it. I'll wait. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. All right, well. William Pitt, the elder, Earl of Chatham. Emily works with his son. Yeah. So we figured out. All right. We've got all the information we can. Now let's move on to the next person. Damn, I need to find some royal jelly in this place. Actually, speaking of which, ah, let's just go into Bonaparte. <clears throat> oh, Devil's Thorn. That is. Vulnerabilities, okay. Well, at least now we know we can use that one if we need to join discussion. The Prince by Machiavelli. A 
perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm. That might come in handy. Ooh, politics. I'm not surprised by that, to be honest, though. <laughs> Manipulation. Wow. Hannibal crossing the Alps. Another military success. Why do I get nothing but visions of horror in my room? And he gets victory after victory? <laughs> Wait, wasn't there... Was... Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Yay! Oh, thank you, that's good. The Battle of Alexander at Isus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. It's a beautiful weapon, a Levy Damask Blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. Conviction. <clears throat> well, well, well. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Powerly continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. Okay. Oh. I feel sorry for her, actually. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. At least we found multiple immunities. That's good. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. Let's go and see if we can find some jelly or other things. A ruble. Ooh, okay. That'll do. Oh, nice. French actor Talma is Nero and Britannicus, the last emperor of the Caesar dynasty. Huh. Okay. Ah, so this is the room they must have been in. Okay. There's just one holster in Bonaparte's gear. And the pistol is missing. On the other hand, his cleaning equipment is in mint condition. That's typical of the soldier in him. Right. <clears throat> so someone has my taking his weapon then. Okay. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. Okay. Persingeterix throws down his arms at the feet of Julius Caesar by Royer. Two great army chiefs. Huh. Golden elixir. Consume without excess. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we have plenty <clears throat> of things, so we can get some free skill points and vulnerabilities. And he has at least two immunities that were found. So he's immune to conviction and politics. Okay. <coughs> oh, excuse me, God. Your 
Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. Yeah, did you recognize her? Recognize Were prowl? you able to recognize the Prowler? Unfortunately not, no. It was dark, and Lord Mortimer was waiting for me. I was not really paying attention anyway. Okay. Um, right. Vulnerabilities. Uh, blah. Elixir. This costs us. Okay, it's not an immunity. It's not an immunity, so that's good. Okay, let's try this then. Excuse me for insisting, but if you saw him or her. I'm sure you would have more information than that. It's just that you don't think it can be of help to me. What do you mean? I don't know. Was it a woman, for instance? Bearing in mind that all the women here wear whalebone dresses, which is rather noticeable. Uh, a man, I should say. I don't recall seeing the silhouette of the dress. You see, you saw many things, in fact. Hang on. Laissez-moi réfléchir. Let me think a minute. A wig? His height? The sound of his footsteps, maybe. Ah, his height. We oui. somewhat imposing. A tall man, and straight. As for the rest, I don't know, Monsieur de Richer. Not to worry. That's already quite a lot. Thank you for everything. Tall and imposing. Okay. I've been studying him for a while now, and I don't think he was lying. Yet... I'm surprised how easy it was for me to read him. It must surely be his military side. I wish they all could be like that. My investigation would be finished already. <laughs> true. <clears throat> Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Who with? Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, and His Eminence Piaget as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. So that leaves Von Volna and Peru. Okay. Oh, and Emily. And Emma. Okay. Just interesting. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all, except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. <laughs> what time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, oh, couldn't think straight, so I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. Not really, no. 
Okay. Well, this will all we can out of him. Well, have we finished, Monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Well, so based on what I have so far, my clues lead me to um, <coughs> excuse me, both Chibilitate this now. Devil's Thorn. I'll keep it. Yep. My clues lead me to either Peru or Von Volna. Which is never a good sign. But I'm keeping my I'm keeping Keep you an open mind on that one, so far as that's concerned, anyway. Alright. I would normally continue a little bit more, but it's actually getting getting late for me. So I'm going to end this part here. Um, and I will see you next time when we continue my investigation. Um, I may actually, while I'm not recording, go on... Um, try and find some royal jelly or maybe open a couple of things if i able to if not then never mind i will see you next time for more of the council <laughs>